evening. So I think since uh, so that's already introduced the panel. So India is, of course, at a very exciting juncture. We've seen uh, performance lift significantly, largely driven by ADR growth. Uh, supply pressure is eased, and we're seeing strong opportunities across uh, resort leisure destinations, uh, tier two and tier three towns. We want to talk a little bit about development strategies across uh, various brands. Kumar, if we could start with you. So miners obviously has grown significantly across South Asia in um, the last couple of years. You've also taken uh, investment positions in certain assets across South Asia. And could we just understand a little bit about how you've uh, adapted and grown across the Indian market and what development strategies you, adopt, you plan to adopt across the region? Of course. Well, first of all, great to be here. And thank you, everyone. Thank you to the organizers for having me. Um, before I answer the question, I need to explain our company's objective. I think that will help me with some context when it comes to our plans in India and how we're planning to adapt to the, to the country here. So minor hotels today, we own and operate eight brands in all tiers. We have around 600 hotels that we, that we either own, lease, or manage. So we call that actually asset right. And uh, we operate in over 60 countries globally. What the, our objective is as a company is not to be the largest hotel company in the world. That's not what we are after here. What we're after is to have the best and most profitable brands that are out there because we're here to make money and we're here to make money for our owners. So that's really uh, the main objective that we have at Minor. And we have a lot of green space in India that we're actually looking at. We're about to open our first hotel in Jaipur, uh, Jaipur and Antara on 15th of November. And we're really, really excited about, about finally being here. And looking now at India, I think the first thing that we need to look at India's dynamic market. And I think throughout the day, we have heard a lot of uh, upbeat uh, statements about India. I think we all know that we are in a resurgence of tourism in a post-pandemic area. We can see that uh, domestic tourism is growing and is set to grow annually by 30%. So for us at Minor, that will remain very much uh, a key focus. At the same time, we have to be uh, very aware of the diversifying inbound market. So markets like the US, UK, Germany, UAE are coming more and more to India. Actually, 52% of the people that are coming from these nations are, are selecting India as their only destination. So f and, and India, by the way, by the end of this year, we're forecasting to we receive around 10.1 million tourists, uh, international tourists. So for us as well, we'll be very focused on keeping very high-end luxury experiences within, this, within these destinations. So that's one, diversified product. Um, India has a lot to offer, from heritage to wellness tourism, to adventure tourism, business, etc. So our brands are well suited uh, for all that. We'll be very focused on creating uh, strategic alliances with groups. Uh, at Minor, we have today owners that are going for their eight, nine, ten hotel already. And um, two last things to mention, not to make this too long. It's sustainability. It's something that I think needs to remain in the forefront of everything that we do. It's not a good to have, but it's a must have nowadays. And people, without people, we're anything, we're nothing, right? So. I think that's, that's the, the key focus is, uh, that we have for the country. Great. Thank you. And could you also talk to us a little bit about the role that you foresee uh, technology to play in your expansion strategy across India? Yeah, of course. I think um, technology will play a key role, uh, especially when it comes to guest personalization and customization. I think if we manage to truly personalize a guest experience, we will be very successful on delivering that guest satisfaction. Actually, we just heard in the presentation before how important that is, right? So at Six Senses, we at, um, at Minor, we have launched actually two uh, apps, one for uh, Anantara and one for Abani, in which we are able to track uh, not only guests will be able to do check-in, check-out, etc., but they will also be able to uh, track their own preferences, etc., etc. This will be linked to our CRM. And based on that, we'll be able to keep recording uh, our guest preference and make sure that we keep servicing them in the right manner every time they come to us. 
Great, thank you. Um, Dhruv, if we could move on to you. So Hyatt, of course, had a very early entry into the Indian uh, industry. Could you talk to us a little bit about your development strategy across India and how that has adapted to the very diverse needs of the country? So, yeah, yes, you're right, Rupa. We entered India way back in 1982. Uh, so that's about a little over 40 years ago. And uh, we were lucky to have uh, uh, the high in Delhi as our first hotel. Uh, it still remains uh, a formidable uh, hotel, uh, even in this uh, crowded marketplace today. Uh, on the back of that, we opened a few Hyatt Regencies, Bombay, Calcutta, then we had Granite Goa and Park Hyatt Goa. So that really set us up in India with an extremely strong foundation, high impact hotels in key markets. And uh, that really propelled our go growth um, it, it was uh, slow going at, in the beginning, but uh, I think uh, over the last, since 2008, uh, our growth has accelerated. We are now, uh, over the last few years, in the last three years, uh, we've moved from uh, 36 hotels to over 50. So uh, it's been really great uh, in terms of hotel openings. We're now at 52 hotels with uh, over 50 uh, in the pipeline. Uh, we have uh, tremendous excitement uh, about India and its prospects. Uh, we are seeing strong performance uh, across all uh, lodging segments. Um, there's, I think, a great opportunity in India with uh, a diverse set of owners. Uh, we are seeing owners' profiles also changing. Uh, owners are now uh, really getting into the business for the, the, the core of hospitality. Uh, uh, we are seeing traction in uh, leisure space. I think that's driven by strong and extremely strong domestic demand, domestic tourism, uh, who's willing to pay top dollar for great experiences. So we're seeing a lot of potential in the leisure segment, resorts that is. Uh, we are seeing a lot of potential in tier two and tier three cities. As these cities urbanize, uh, we'd like to enter those hotels with the relevant brands in our portfolio. And we are starting to see um, big box hotels also come back, uh, which really disappeared for, I would say, at least seven to 10 years. So we're starting to see that happen as well, which is, I think, a very, very encouraging sign um, in large, large metros. So I think exciting times. Um, I dare say this, uh, this is, uh, we, we say we're we are, we are a cyclical business, but I think uh, here the fundamentals are so strong that uh, I personally think this is going to be an upcycle that will stay for longer than what we've seen ever in our uh, hospitality, short hospitality history in the Indian market. So I hope I'm proven right. Thanks, Dhruv. Um, so we, you spoke uh, a little bit about the opportunities and where you see opportunities across India. Could you also talk to us about some of the challenges you see in developing at this stage in the current environment? So challenges uh, from a development standpoint from, from our, in our world, I, I think one of the biggest things that, um, something that's most important to us is working with the right partners. And um, I, you have seen uh, India has been notorious, if I could use that word, for attrition. You know, hotels getting signed and never seeing the light of day. And uh, it really became, it was an extreme, it became extreme just after the real estate crash when, you know, a lot of people jumped into the industry and were the first to jump out. And you saw a lot of hotels that uh, didn't, didn't get built. That's one part of it. The other part of it is, um, is, is project management. Uh, it takes a long time for a hotel to, to see the light, to, to, from, you know, from the time it starts getting designed up to the time it opens. Again, in India, the cycle is very long. So these are the two biggest challenges, uh, working with the right partner, and uh, it's just the length of time that it takes uh, for a hotel to, from start to finish. Uh, so that's something that uh, I think we need to navigate, but um, I, I do see a change in the hotel. I talked about the ownership profile changing, and I, see, I do see uh, that uh, as a positive sign. Thank you, Dhruv.
have to move on to Jacob. Um, Jacob Hilton, of course, um, seen a strong amount of growth in the last couple of years. Um, you will soon introduce the Waldorf brand to India, um, interestingly, in one of our key leisure markets. Um, could you talk us through Hilton's process of development and site selection and some of the challenges and uh, criteria that you have adopted along the way? So thanks, Rupa, and uh, thanks, Bhuvnesh, for getting me on this panel. Really appreciate it. So, uh, I mean, you're absolutely right, you're right. I mean, Hilton globally, we've got 25 very well-recognized, fantastic brands, right? But ensuring the right brand for the right location is key to what we do at development. And I'd like to break your question into two broad buckets, right? I'd like to break it up into urban hotels and leisure hotels. So when it comes to site selection for urban hotels, I think the fundamental guiding principle has always been that hotels follow demand generators. So identifying the demand generators, the nature of those demand generators, knowing about city trends, you know, uh, uh, growth patterns, et cetera, many a times is key to understanding what is the right positioning for that particular location, and by extension, what is the right brand, right? Uh, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, leisure hotels, it's a lot different, right? I mean, I've always believed that for leisure hotels, the right product has the ability to create destinations and create new segments of demand which never existed. You know, in terms of challenges, right, you know, when, you know, we are now moving from predominantly being tier one, tier two focused markets, we're moving into new markets, right? Tier one, tier two, tier two markets, all of us, for all of us, it's a lot easier to make decisions because information is freely available, right? We all are aware of these markets, but the moment you go into the smaller markets, emerging markets, you know, I'd be, you know, I'd be uh, uh, stupid to say that I understand these markets very well, right? We depend a lot in these markets on the local knowledge of our of the partners who are committing the capital in these uh, in these markets and you know we like to rely on their knowledge base right in the end all that i would say is that you know we as people in development are not just custodians of the brands that we represent but we are also custodians of the capital that's being entrusted upon us and you know respecting that capital and ensuring that the right brand which does most justice to that capital i think is key to long term success stories with the partners that we sign up with Thanks, Jacob. So, Gaurav, moving on to you. So, IHCL has a strong uh, heritage in um, Indian hospitality. Um, how do you balance the brand legacy with the need for modern development needs? Interesting question. Uh, clearly, I guess everybody knows IHCL here. And we are known for the culture and heritage that we bring along in our assets. My view is a modern traveler is now keenly looking more of it, right? So the moment he sees, and uh, we are talking of our iconic brand Taj, the moment he gets into a Taj hotel, he sees the culture, he sees the, uh, I would say, localness of the product there, he can witness the culture, and, and that way, just being pure to the brand, we can cater, that's one way to cater to the demand. Also, we have gone a step further, whereby through our AMA brand, we have gone even further to the locations where a hotel may not be feasible, right? Customers who are looking for very bespoke experiences can, can explore uh, AMA. Also, for the traveler who is young, right, and is traveling within the city, we have our brands like Vivanta and Ginger, which caters to their need, their niche, uh, they are modern. Uh, uh, not only from product perspective, from technology perspective, uh, let's say our loyalty program also caters to uh, a young uh, traveler, where it cuts across various, I would say, product classes within the Tata Group. Our loyalty program uh, captures hospitality. Uh, if you're also buying groceries, then also you're part of our loyalty program, then you can earn points. You're, you're traveling in airlines, you're doing that. So, so this way, not only from product, but also uh, from perspective of our, I would say, loyalty program, then uh, sustainability is one thing that we are capturing, and modern traveler is very conscious uh, and aware of that through our program, Pathia. Uh, also, I, I mentioned that we are trying to get more local, uh, right, uh, which is also in form of the people that we hire, and there is diversity in hiring also. So this is the full package that we are offering, and not just stopping at the product. Thanks. And what are some of the challenges that you faced in real estate development in India? Well, uh, from my perspective, I have acquired assets. I have got into litigations with the assets that I have bought. Right? We have signed many development deals. Uh, 
I guess we all must have done that, that we would have had breakfast in one location, lunch in another, and dinner in the third location, which has its physical toll. But the most challenging aspect for me is when I meet an unaware uh, hotel owner, right, or a person who is trying to build a hotel and doesn't understand the nuances of it. Uh, from capital perspective, from product perspective, from longevity perspective. So, so I guess to educate them, and indirectly, Dhruv did mention finding the right partner, and I would say he would be a right partner if we educate him right. So the biggest challenge for me would be an unaware uh, hotel owner, or a person who is thinking of building a hotel but is unaware. Great. Thank you, Gaurav. So, Devshish, moving on to you. So Radisson has been in the country for 26 years. Um, how have you adapted your development strategy in view of the scale that you've currently achieved in India now? Thank you, Rupa, <coughs> and thanks, Bhuvnesh, for curating this event so nicely. Yes, 26 years, Rupa, in the country, and we have reached a scale of about 200 hotels, if we include the active pipeline that we have. And in the next five years, we intend to double up this portfolio. Now. As somebody said, uh, what got you here won't get you there. I think it was uh, Marshall Goldsmith. So we have to focus on the right strategy. And that strategy is actually three-pronged. And we apply different steps of the strategy to different brands that we have. We are selective, proactive, and reactive. And uh, uh, let me explain how, how do we actually apply this strategy to various brands that we have. So when it comes to the upper spectrum of the brands that we have, uh, uh, which constitutes uh, Radisson Collection, Radisson Blue, and Radisson Red. We're extremely selective. We are extremely selective on the location, the city that we want to go to, the partner, owner partner that we are dealing with. Uh, we, we focus only on management contract route when it comes to these brands. And of course, the scale. So we have a minimum threshold of number of rooms per hotel. Then comes the second layer of the brands, which is Radisson and Parkin by Radisson. These are high velocity brands in our portfolio. And for these high velocity brands, we are extremely aggressive. So we are proactive and reactive, both for these uh, two brands. And when I say that, what I mean is, uh, it, when it comes to reaching out to tier two, tier three towns, we are fairly open with these two brands. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, the growth model, uh, our preferred model stays management. However, sometimes, depending on the intent uh, of the ownership, sometimes you come across owners who want to build a, an entire vertical of uh, hospitality. Uh, so depending on the intent of the owner, we also uh, remain open for franchising, wherein uh, for the first few years, first five to seven years, we manage, uh, and then we franchise it to the, uh, to the ownership. Uh, and, and selectively and rarely, we also do uh, franchising when it comes to these two brands. Then comes the portfolio of two brands, which are uh, meant for conversion of hotels, uh, which are namely Radisson Individuals, which is our upscale conversion brand, and Radisson Individuals Retreats, which is our upper upscale um, experiential boutique resorts mm. conversion brand. Uh, and when these two brands come in play, <laughs> uh, when these two brands come in play, uh, we don't make owners go through the, in, the entire painful process of uh, changing the look and feel of the product. They should be good on uh, FLS and IT, and we are good to go. So these are two high, fast-moving brands that we have. And then we have a brand called Parkin and Sweets by Radisson, which is an entry-level mid-scale brand, for which we have done strategic partnerships uh, with two companies for 14 states across the country. So that's the, that's the strategy that we have been following. And see, it's not about... Uh, having numbers. Uh, hopefully, if the market continues the way it is, uh, we will double, double it up. Uh, this year, we signed about 3,300 rooms already. Uh, but it's about being the most popular brand uh, amongst your employees, or rather the workforce largely available, uh, focusing on the right value proposition for your owners, and of course, having uh, satisfied customers. The overall strategy boils down to these three parameters. Thank you, Devashish. Uh, Bhaskar, moving on to you. So, ITC has a very diverse portfolio across the mid-scale to luxury segment, and of course, very large geographical spread. Um, how do you uh, scale up in terms of development, and how do you achieve consistency across? How has ITC worked to achieve consistency across the portfolio? Uh, thank you, everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Rupa. Um, well, there's nothing 
that we've hidden in all these years. Uh, we are shortly going to complete 50 years of operating hotels in India. Uh, it's been a long experience. It's been a journey that's taken us to different parts of the country. Uh, we've uh, blended in a pool of brands which have uh, taken us to probably about 75 locations. Now we are on a different learning curve where we are trying to engage with the right partner piece. Uh, so beyond just selecting the perfect site, I think we are now engaging on this journey to find uh, the right partner uh, with the right vision where we can align the objectives. Uh, testament to that have been a couple of brands we just brought to life uh, in the last 24 months. Uh, we've got uh, Mementos by ITC Hotels in Udaipur, and now we just debuted with a second asset, the Mementos in uh, Jaipur. Similarly, Story has been a private uh, experience for uh, our owners, our guests, and I think when we blend in the big box hotels, the iconic hotels that we have set across the country, we are probably looking at uh, everything that's there in the toolkit to seek more uh, partnerships, look at better sites, and do models which probably a traditional large format hotel company has not been able to successfully venture into. We are happier to, you know, kind of find here and test it out or test waters for them if, if, if we can phrase it that way. Great. And um, you can't talk ITC without talking about sustainability. So could you just talk to us about uh, how ITC has incorporated sustainability into your development journey? So, uh, yes, we'll complete 50 years of operation, but we are into our third decade of sustainability initiatives. Uh, this was something that was done at a parent company level, and then we imbibed the best practices that were applicable to uh, construction techniques, site selection techniques, and then gradually as these hotels opened, we were able to then uh, step into the associate engagement and associate engagement piece. So uh, the way we look at it is there are many tools. I don't want to kind of run through it, but uh, for us, sustainability is a composition of two words. Uh, we built ability to sustain every practice that we bring into uh, the working system. And today, we are getting uh, favorably recognized by the guests, uh, the customers, uh, the travelers for every little thing that we are doing with the sustainable initiative. So it's, it's just the beginning. In that sense, we've done all our pilot tests, and we understand where we need to be responsible for every decision that we are taking. And you will hear more of it and see more of it as we you know, debut more hotels across the country. Great. Thank you, Bhaskar. So I think, uh, thank you, everyone, the entire panel, for all your valuable inputs. I think definitely a very exciting time to be in the industry. We see huge opportunities in core cities, uh, leisure markets, and tier two and tier three cities. And I think sustainability and adaptability is going to be key to expansion. We look forward to see all these development strategies unfolding. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much to all the dignitaries and state.